Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Right. Mr. Secretary, can you comment on President Biden's decision not to seek second term? And do you see Vice President Harris as a able replacement for the President? Well, first let me say it has been and it remains the honor and privilege of my lifetime to work for President Biden. I've been working for him now for more than 22 years. And uh, if you step back for a second and think about what he inherited when he took office, um, maybe the worst health crisis in at least 100 years in this country, the worst economic crisis going back to the Great Recession, the worst democratic crisis in as long as I can think. Um, and we had countries around the world looking at all of this and circling like sharks to see if they could take advantage of the perceived weakness of the United States. Um, and what he did, what he's done, what he continues to do uh, over these three and a half years and going forward through the remainder of this term uh, has been to turn all of that around uh, in a powerful way. Uh, the investments that uh, we've made here at home in our future, in our competitiveness, uh, whether it's through the Infrastructure Bill, whether it's through the uh, Chips and Science Act, whether it's through the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, countries around the world see that we're serious about investing in ourselves and competing strongly. Um, adversaries who thought that we couldn't get our act together at home, he's demonstrated exactly uh, the, the contrary to that. And then, of course, the rebound that we've had under his leadership from COVID, from the economic crisis, has been extraordinary. When you look at how our economy is performing compared to other major economies, other major democratic economies, uh, we're leading the way, whether it's in getting inflation down, uh, making sure that uh, employment is up. We have the lowest unemployment in, uh, in 60 years uh, in this country. One of the great measures I see is we've had historic years now of foreign direct investment in the United States. That is one of the greatest gauges of credibility uh, for our country that, uh, that you can find. And then, from my perspective, um, on the instructions that the President uh, gave me from day one, rebuilding, re-energizing, reimagining all of our alliances and partnerships, our standing around the world is infinitely stronger than it was when he, uh, when he took office. Um, in speaking to him uh, the other day after he made his decision about not seeking re-election, what he's intensely focused on is the work that remains over these next six months to continue the, uh, uh, the efforts, the work that we've been doing, uh, particularly uh, trying to bring peace to the Middle East, uh, ending the war in Gaza, putting that region on a better trajectory, continuing to deal as uh, effectively as he has been with the ongoing aggression by Russia against Ukraine, uh, and making sure we continue to do everything we can to strengthen Ukraine. Our engagement throughout the Indo-Pacific, where we have been uh, building relationships and partnerships that are stronger than they've ever been, whether it's with uh, our, our allies, uh, Japan, Korea, Australia, uh, uh, or uh, New Zealand, uh, whether it's with countries like uh, the Philippines and India, uh, or whether it's with emerging countries like Vietnam, like Indonesia. Uh, in so many ways across the board, uh, we are now stronger around the world uh, than we've been. So he's determined to continue that work, and uh, I'm determined to continue with him. Yeah. But when it comes, I'm sorry, you, you, you asked about uh, Vice President? Um, look, uh, I don't, uh, as you all know, I don't engage in politics. What I can tell you is this. Um, I've known the Vice President for more than a decade. Uh, these last three and a half years, I've been able to uh, observe her very closely in the Situation Room, in the Oval Office, uh, around the world, uh, as a leading voice for American foreign policy and for our diplomacy. We've been together at the uh, Munich Security Conference the last three years. Uh, I've seen her command uh, the room uh, full of world leaders from uh, not only across Europe, uh, but across the world. Uh, I think she's made uh, four trips to the Indo-Pacific, helping to lead our diplomacy there, deeply engaged in the, uh, in the Middle East and trying to find a peaceful path forward, um, helping to drive investment in countries in, uh, in our own hemisphere so that people have opportunity in the countries that they come from so that they don't have to make the hazardous journey to the United States seeking a better life because they can get it in their own countries. In each and every one of these areas, uh, she's been a leading voice in our administration. And what I've observed is someone who asks time and again uh, the penetrating questions, uh, who cuts to the chase and is intensely focused on the interests of the American people and making sure that our foreign policy is doing everything it can to advance those interests. Uh, and I've really, it's really been a privilege for me to see that 
uh, up close these last three and a half years. Mr. Thank Secretary, you. Yeah, your um, foreign policy is not uh, Vice President Harris's forte. Mm -hmm. So has she been sort of learning on the job as you go? You described, mm -hmm. you described uh, her, her approach. Tell us a little more about that. Oh, I would say, I would say in my uh, experience, it very much is her forte because, as I said, I've seen her uh, not only around the world, but I've seen her on the most critical foreign policy questions of our time in the Situation Room at the White House, at the Oval Office uh, with the President. And uh, my observation is she's uh, a very strong, very effective, uh, effective and deeply respected voice for our country around the world. When she speaks, uh, she speaks on behalf of the United States. Uh, and what I've observed in meetings that we've had with, uh, with world leaders, uh, I mentioned again the Munich Security Forum, where she really commands the, uh, the room for these past three years, just um, a couple of months ago. She, of course, represented uh, the United States at uh, the Ukraine Peace Conference. Um, that was being held in, uh, in Switzerland. So time and again, um, I've seen her leadership uh, in every, literally every corner of the world. Africa, where she's led major investment initiatives to strengthen our, uh, our, our relationships and partnerships. So uh, no, what I've seen is someone who is already deeply experienced and very, very effective around the world. Anyway, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.